Hello everybody, and just here and welcome back to Symphogear. <laughs> Today we're gonna be watching episode 6. And uh, as always, I have no idea what to expect of it. <laughs> because uh, this series takes us in all sorts of wild directions and uh, it defies any and all of my expectations. So... I have no clue what's going to happen. Um, in the last episode, uh, we were transporting Durandal and uh, Hibiki. Hibiki? Hibiki. Yes. Uh, sorry, I, I have a list of characters here because I'm still... I still tend to forget their names sometimes. Hibiki. Uh, Hibiki used that Durandal and uh, she went all sicko mode, and she was very, very, very efficient with that Durandal. And uh, I'm still wondering if it's something special about Hibiki. Uh, now, uh, uh, it was said in, like, earlier episodes, I believe, uh, if not, then someone gave me a spoiler, apparently, <laughs> that um, full relics, uh, not shards of relics, but full full relics, like Durandal, can be used without any need for synchronization, right? Because they don't need uh, the song to function, they don't need any specific human to be used by them, which also explains uh, why the um, her name is Chris, I believe, the, uh, the one that uh, uses the Nehustan armor, yeah? Uh, which explains why she is able to use the Nehustan armor without any issue, uh, without needing to sing, and uh, I'm assuming without being uh, particularly, um, you know, synchronized with it. So it's perhaps not that Hibiki is super special, that she can use the Durandal, uh, but then again, why would uh, her doing that get so much attention from uh, Ryoko? Right? Ryoko almost, you know, wet herself at the excitement of seeing Hibiki use Durandal and her going all sicko mode and destroying all the noise and fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chris. Is Hibiki special somehow? After all, it is still my suspicion that she is somehow special. Uh, maybe not in a way I thought that she's able to use any... Um, any Simpho gear, maybe it's some other way she's special, maybe it's her Sika mode uh, that makes her unique, I don't know, but I still believe that she's special somehow. I mean, she's the protagonist for a reason, right? Um, I also, uh, in the last episode, went all conspiracy theory about uh, Ryoko being potentially evil, belonging to our um, evil organization, uh, being the Domi Momi that tortured Chris. I still think that's the case. Uh, I think I made a pretty good <laughs> case in the last episode about her potentially being uh, a member of that evil organization. But after the episode ended, I had another thought that perhaps it's family, right? Perhaps it's she's a sister or something. I don't know. Then again... Uh, Ryoko had all that, you know, magic shield that she was able to use, and she had that weird look on her face, that, you know, evil look on her face when uh, Hibiki was destroying all the noise. So I still believe that the more plausible explanation is that she is the Domi Mommy and just changes her hair color somehow. I mean, there was the whole bloodied... Uh, a bloody briefcase, uh, her superpowers, her the shape of her hair and her lips and everything, everything matches. Um, what's gonna happen in today's episode? I don't know. Perhaps Tsubasa will finally, uh, uh, you know, uh, wake up from the whole coma and thing, and uh, she and um, Hibiki will start fighting together again. Maybe. I have no clue. I have no clue. I have no clue what's gonna happen. I mean, 
sooner or later Tsubasa will be fighting with Hibiki. That's rather unavoidable, right? They are uh, co-workers, they are partners, they belong to the same team. So of course it's gonna happen. But how exactly? We don't know. There is also Miku, who is still um, an overarching thing in the series, right? And uh, at the end of episode 4, was it? Yeah, it was at the end of episode 4, when uh, there was that scene with, you know, blackness and uh, Hibiki saying that I would never lie to you. There is still a little bit of that, a little bit of interpersonal drama, and uh, I think that's another thing that might happen in this episode. I have no clue. Uh, and we won't know that unless we watch it. So let's do just that, shall we? Uh, after I take a sip of my tea, of course. Oh, it's getting bitter. I better pull out the... Uh, wait a moment. Yeah, I should pull out the leaves. Squeeze them out nice and good. And there we go. Can't let the tea go any more bitter than that. Uh, okay, uh, let's give you guys some subs. And let's get going with episode 6. Oh, where's my mouse? Here it is. Is that episode 6? Episode 6. Season 1, episode 6 of Symphogear, version by uh, something something subs by D-Truck. I said it time and again, no reason for me to repeat it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have a list of characters, OBS is all set up, everything is working. So, let's get going in 3, 2, 1, go! Okay, we're starting in the evil mansion of evilness. Is that Chris? Okay, so maybe... Oh, okay, Hibiki is special, but it's about activation, right? They tried to awaken, uh, uh, what was it called? The Nehustan armor with a whole concert, right? And they didn't manage to do that. And uh, now we know that Chris was trying to awaken her uh, noise summoning stuff with, um, again, for years. But Hibiki, she just picked up the Duran Durandal and just started using it. Uh, not even that. Her song, her song alone, made Durandal reawaken and raise from the case. That's how Hibiki is special. Her song had the same effect on a complete relic that a an entire fucking concert was needed for. Concert by Tsubasa and... Uh, who's the red-haired one? I always forget her name. Kanade? Kanade, I think. Yeah. Th they had to have an entire concert to awaken Nehustan armor. Hibiki just awakened... Okay. So I was right, she is special. Oh, I'm hyped. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so she was rescued from child traffickers. And yeah, it is basically an abusive relationship. Oh, you're not naked? Uh, 
Yep, she's very much jelly. I would like to see you try. And I have a feeling that we will see her try. One more question, though. The whole staff that can summon the noise. Weren't Symphogear Gear created as weapons against the noise? Why would someone create a Symphogear Gear that summons the noise? Or were the noise summoned by the staff supposed to fight against the noise? You know, fight fire with fire. Yep, Hibiki is training. She's taking things seriously now. You can control it. Like... My girl. <laughs> Getting further and further away from her wife. What a nice, you know, metaphor. She she literally henshins. <laughs> Ooh, buff Hibiki. That's my head cannon now. By the end of the series, Hibiki will have a six pack. Expensive? <laughs> yeah. Politics are gonna get a little bit more complicated from now on. That's nice. Then again, it it's not like your HQ was attacked, so... I guess it's good to be prudent about those things, though, so... How else does he expect them to operate, though? I mean, sure, that's a nice sentiment, right? To have them uh, liable and uh, uphold the law and all that. But... Ah. Uh. Oh. 
someone trying to get in or something trying to get out. The lipstick marks. I'm paranoid about the details by now. Just her bottom lip uh, remained there. And I thought you were just a manager. She won't go to buy Okonomiyaki. Oh no. Oh no. First stargazing, now Okonomiyaki. Is Miku gonna become the villain? I can absolutely see her becoming a villain for like half a season. I can absolutely see it happening. Her being recruited by Fine or whoever the Domi Momi is, and her acting up, uh, acting on her, uh, using her jealousy and the uh, feeling of. Uh, rejectment of being of being rejected and abandoned and recruiting her oh i can absolutely see it happen bitch you live like this <laughs> i have a feeling that she does You should be giving those flowers to your wife, not to your side hoe. Uh. You also know how to sing, so... Uh, <clears throat> Hibiki is gonna become Tsubasa's maid, isn't she? Miku is gonna see them together. She absolutely will see them together. Maybe eating okonomiyaki at the flower. <laughs> we didn't have to wait long for that. We didn't have to wait long, did we? Kind of weird as far as hobbies go, but but sure. Oh, you haven't met the world of influencers. The more money you give to a homeless person, and uh, the better the video quality is, the more likes you get on the Instagram or whatever. With you yourself being saved, yep. 
So she wants to pay it back, essentially, to the world. She was saved, so now she wants to save. That's actually great motivation for a character. Paid back, paid forward. Yeah, you won't be able to eat Okonomiyaki with your wife, though. Uh now she's talk she's speaking about herself. Hmm. Add an enemy. I told you, you just have to scream the name of your armed gear. <laughs> Unless you scream its name, it won't appear. And bring them to the light side. Okay. Oh. We gonna eat the Okonomiyaki or... Is Hibiki going to arrive here at last moment? I sure hope she will. That's a lot of cabbage. Then she won't tell you anything because she can't. And Miku will continue spiral spiraling down and down and down and down. Into becoming a villain. I was hoping that that's gonna remind her that she... Oh no! Are they gonna meet Miku there? And she's deposing to assert her dominance. Uh, Hibiki won't make it to flower. Oh? Oh? 
Will Miku learn about Hibiki's secret now? She will. Okay, that's a much better scenario. That's a much better... Yes! 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 Oh, I love it. <laughs> but I have a girlfriend. <clears throat> it's determination to bring you to the light side. Right, she was... She was hurt by humanity, so now she has a distrust for humanity. Okay. I can't read that. You'll be once more tortured? I thought you liked that. Kamehame? No? You need to scream its name, I'm telling you. I mean, that's a valid solution as well. As I mentioned already, I fucking love brawlers. I love the brawler archetype. Yeah, pull her clothes and serve a nice one punch. And knock her unconscious. Yep, 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 I love it. Honestly, don't let Hibiki summon her armed gear. I want her to be a brawler. I want her to remain a brawler. Maybe let her use the armed gear as, you know, ultimate weapon. When nothing else works, she summons Gangnir. But until then, let her, let her remain a brawler. Oh, that's such a hype episode. Such a short... But hype episode, do we get an after credit scene? No, we probably won't. God damn. Uh... Every episode, this anime surprises me with something. And it's all... And it's always a positive surprise. Not once so far have I been disappointed. There are anime out there that I 
absolutely love and adore, but so far there hasn't been an anime that I've seen that didn't have at least one disappointing thing, you know? One episode that's kind of weak, or, uh, some char or some character acting out of character and it frustrating me, or something getting stretched out for too long just to create artificial drama, you know? Every single anime I've seen had issues like that. Simple Gear, so far, is the exact opposite. Every time I think that, oh no, they're gonna get into the rut of doing this thing for however long, they prove, no, solved. I love it. I love it. We need, we need to get we need to go through this episode again, just so I can uh, gush about those moments a little more. <laughs> uh, there we go. Full screen. Let's go. Hmm. She spent half a year preparing for Solomon's cane. So even though it is a full relic, I'm assuming Solomon's cane, she still had to prepare for it. Mm, it's. Maybe she does have full compatibility with it, but she still had to prepare. Uh, Nehuchtan Armor needed a whole ass concert to reawaken, but Hibiki, indeed, she just she just reawakened Durandal with nothing. She just sang and Durandal awoke, just like that. So she is special somehow. Okay, glad to see that they will be eating a flower together. <laughs> uh, yeah, and of course she is um, she's jealous because her dummy mommy, her mistress, now has a different girl that she looks forward to, right? She has an another object of affection. Let me take a good look at her. God damn it. Ah. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, that's her goal. Uh, again. Again, I question the staff of Solomon. Uh, Simple Gears, as we know, and I'm reiterating what I said during the episode. Uh, Simple Gear, as we know, are created to as weapons against the noise. So, Solomon's staff was either created to summon the noise that whoever wields Solomon's staff can control, to fight an army of noise with their own army of noise, or Solomon's staff can be used to summon other things, perhaps some anti-noise as well, but it can also be warped into summoning noise if you consciously want to summon noise, again, uh, instead of the anti-noise, let's just call it, then it will let you summon noise as well, and that's why she's using it explicitly to summon the noise. Or, Solomon's staff is somehow a noise relic. It's not a relic created by people of Earth, of this planet, of this universe, I don't know where the noise comes from, so I'm just gonna say people of here, people of the Earth, uh, they created the Simpho gear, and similarly, the noise have their own relics. Maybe the noise are just grunts, and uh, there are some aliens or deities or anti-humans or whatever you want to call them, and they have their own Simpho gear equivalent that allows them to summon the noise, that allows them to control the noise. And maybe the Solomon stuff is one of those relics that somehow got into their possession. I don't know, I'm just theorizing here. Uh, because it seems really weird to have uh, a device that allows you to summon your like, perfect enemy. Because the noise is the perfect enemy of humanity. The noise is, is an antithesis of humanity you could say, right? It, it, noise is literally anti-humans. When a noise monster comes into contact with a human, they both scatter into carbon dust. It almost, it almost seems like noise is intelligent design. 
it's not uh, that noise aren't creatures that just kind of came to be or just happened to you know land on earth on some asteroid or whatever uh, whatever origins they would have but instead the noise were created consciously as a weapon that works specifically against humans why and how and who hmm that's interesting because one more thing that's also worth noting uh the noise doesn't benefit from killing humans right uh you have other shows with similar premise like I don't know, Strike Witches or whatever, or Darling in the Franks. Uh, the um, the enemies always defeat the humans and kill the humans to either gain territory or to feed on them or because they're controlled by some other being and, uh, you know, they want to cover the land, they want to transform Earth into their own uh, planet, their own sanctuary, whatever, whatever. In case of noise, noise is very, uh, very peculiar in that noise killing humans doesn't benefit the noise because if a noise monster kills human kills a human that noise monster doesn't get to devour that human that noise monster also perishes that also tells me that noise monsters are weapons used by someone else uh, they aren't they aren't the main um, the main antagonist here they are merely a weapon used by the main antagonist because someone benefits from humans being killed otherwise they wouldn't be killing those humans right but it's not the noise monsters hmm interesting some food for thought you know yeah hibiki is training and uh i love this uh this little scene, where was it? We're panning out away from her. Yeah, Hibiki is running, thinking to herself about her as a Valkyrie, her role in the fight with the noise, right? How she has to aim even further. She has to go even further, 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 further. But as she goes further, she goes further. She goes further from Miku. And we're panning out as Hiviki gets further and further away. And uh, all those moments here, uh, including the uh, including Hibiki uh, telling her, telling Miku that, oh yeah, we're totally gonna get some ok okonomiyaki. Uh, by the way, I don't like how they translated okonomiyaki to pancakes. I know that okonomiyaki is essentially pancakes, but I don't like that translation. It's like, you know, uh, onigiri being translated to jelly-filled donuts doesn't sit quite well with me. Uh, especially since it's a fan sub. Just, you know, uh, a little side rant, I guess. <laughs> uh, I can... I would expect this kind of translation, this kind of localization from um, subs on, uh, you know, Crunchyroll or, or Fanimation or 4Kids or whatever, uh, because the um, their goal is to appeal to wide masses, right? And um, if you want your show to appeal to wide masses, you probably won't use okonomiyaki. You will use the closest, uh, closest thing to it. You will use pancakes. Uh, you won't uh, use onechan. You will use sister. Uh, you won't use uh, uh, dash san in your uh, in your subtitles. You will use Mister prefix, right? That's understandable in those like mass appeal subs. But when it comes to fan subs. I really expect close translation and translation aimed at weebs, right? I expect to see kun and san and uh, sama in subtitles. I expect okonomiyaki, I expect onigiri, uh, I expect, uh, you know, 
all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I I don't want uh, ramen translated to chicken soup, right? Uh, because uh, if you're watching fun subs, chances are you're not a uh, a part of the uh, you know mass target of the popular uh, streaming services. Uh, chances are you are someone who's so deep into anime, so much into anime, who's weeb enough to actively seek out fun subs, right? You either uh, pirate your anime or you watch it on some illegal streaming sites or something like that. So chances are you're a weeb, so chances are you know what san suffix means. Chances are you know what is okonomiyaki. Or even if you don't know what is okonomiyaki, you have enough curiosity about the culture, about the... Um, yeah, about the culture, about the uh, food of Japan, that you will look up what the fuck is okonomiyaki, right? Or, or the fan subber would insert a translator note explaining you what okonomiyaki is. I miss those days. I miss the days of uh, translator notes. Keikaku means plan, you know? I miss it. I miss those days. A little bit of a side rant. The subs have been good so far, from what I know, uh, from what I can tell in in my with my uh, limited knowledge of Japanese. But this kind of stuck out to me. Okonomiyaki being translated to pancakes. Not a huge fan of it. I'd rather the translation be as direct uh, as possible. Like you wouldn't translate borscht to uh, beetroot soup, right? You would say borscht. So why translate okonomiyaki to pancakes? Uh, politics. Yeah, we're making our base better and more secure. Uh, it, on one hand, it makes sense that the politicians uh, want them to stay within the law and that it will make, um, make them safer from external interference. Right, because if they if they're not beholden to the law, they can technically do anything. Right, they can sell that technology. They can send a sinful gear squad, a squad of Valkyries to France to defend France from uh, from the noise. If they have uh, a lot of free, um, a lot of ability to act freely, if their leash is too short, so I can understand the reasoning. However them uh, deciding to kind of underfund them, that I cannot understand. Uh, I know that it's a secret thing, it's a very secret initiative, but still I don't understand underfunding. Um, I understand uh, when sometimes in anime or in other media you have like a lab that works on something uh, largely seen as useless, but in the end it, uh, but in the end it turns out to save the day, right? We all know that trope. Uh, I understand that kind of lab being underfunded, uh, and perhaps even uh, in uh, under the threat of closure. They want to close it because they're making. Uh, uh, nuclear microwaves or something like that, right? Something completely useless. Uh, and uh, in the end, nuclear microwaves turn out to be uh, the perfect weapon against the alien invasion or whatever, and the production of nuclear microwaves skyrockets, right? Uh, I can understand that kind of lab being underfunded, but they are literally the only people who can stand against the noise. Quite literally, all the funding should be going to them. Cut the funding of military, of like regular military to zero, because regular military cannot stand against the noise. Put all the funding into them. Who cares that it's secret? Right? Put all the funding to them. Or, you know, create a... Uh, a shell military branch or something 
that they're going to be working under the guise of. And with all the funding there, the public eye still sees that, hey, they're putting in the same amount of money into military as they always were. They're even putting even more, but, you know, there's the threat of the noise, so it's understandable that they would be funding the military. But it all really goes to them. I can't understand that. It really smells of extremely incompetent politicians. Not even like politicians, but people. It's common sense that if, you, if you're if you faced with such a great threat, you should be trying to minimize that threat as much as you can. Yeah, I can't, uh, I can't understand that. That begs the question, by the way. If military cannot stand against the noise, uh, because from what I heard, uh, the noise are kind of out of phase with humans, uh, that, you know, human bullets and other projectiles cannot really touch them, and uh, simple gear are special in that everything in the vicinity of a simple gear wielder, all the noise in the vicinity of simple gear wielder gets back in phase, with uh, with the world, so both the Simple Gear wielder can damage and destroy uh, that noise, and also, uh, you know, regular military can now also deal damage to the noise monsters. That begs the question, how is the rest of the world still exist? How does the rest of the world still exist? If Simple Gear are only a thing in Japan, apparently, did the rest of the world figure out some uh, inferior, but still some sort of technology that allows them to fight the noise? Some, I don't know, mobile uh, uh, unit that projects some weird energy that brings the noise back into uh, uh, back into phase with the world and the regular military can destroy them? Or are they just, you know, hey, oh... No, oh no, noise monsters appear, just evacuate however many people you can, and the rest is just gonna fucking die. We can't do anything. Hmm. I wonder how the rest of the world looks. Uh, and as I mentioned, I'm getting paranoid about those things. I, I suddenly think that this, uh, this lipstick <laughs> mark is significant somehow. They're the only one I can ask. Uh, this is kind of weird. Mm. Oh, look, it's a bag from McDonald's and back from and a bucket from Kentucky uh, Korean fried chicken <laughs> or something like that. Totally not McDonald's and totally not KFC. You're the only one I can ask. Uh, I was thinking. Mm, yeah, as I mentioned, it did. It this doesn't quite sit well with me. Uh, I thought initially that he's asking Hibiki to help them somehow because they need the help of a Valkyrie, uh, or that she's gonna get a new mission and will have to fight, and that's why she won't go shopping with Miku. But no, it seems that the reason they called for her was absolutely. I a nothing reason. Hey, Tsubasa is up. Can you just go and visit her? And Hibiki, instead of being, oh yeah, uh, actually I'm like shopping with my friend right now, so uh, I'm gonna drop by as soon as I'm done with it. G go with Miku, go get some okonomiyaki, then visit Tsubasa. She's still in the hospital. She's not going anywhere. I I have trouble understanding what uh, what drove Hibiki to do that. Now I understand it from like storytelling perspective, right? Uh, we need that uh, death by a thousand cuts kind of deal to introduce some um, drama between Hibiki and Miku. First it was stargazing, now it's shopping and okonomiyaki. Uh, they're keep, uh, Hibiki is keeping secrets, and she's sleeping out in the middle of the night, and she's not coming home f until very late, you know? I understand it from storytelling perspective, but I would think that Hibiki would choose to go with Miku? 
and not just immediately rush to Tsubasa Fe feels kind of weird. Th doesn't feel like something Hibiki would do. Especially that, as I said, Tsubasa is just staying here. She's not going anywhere. She'll be hospital. Uh, she's been a host. She'll be in the hospital for maybe like a week or a month more. There is absolutely no reason for Hibiki to just rush straight to her. And uh, I can't help. Uh, I can't help it. Uh, wait, where is it? Uh, just give me a moment. First of all, I'm gonna screenshot it. And... Uh, yeah, this. Come on, load faster. And there we go. Oh, come on. Work with me, OBS. <laughs> That's my first thought. And I'm I, I I'm gonna have to make this scene into this meme. <laughs> Because, I mean, damn, damn Subas. <laughs> At least she's aware that it's not a good thing, though. So hey, um, I'd rather that than leave my room as a mess. Uh, yeah. Be honest with yourself. Oh no. Is it my wife talking to another girl? And she's laughing and she's blushing. Oh no. I don't need this book anymore. I need to spend the money on a box cutter. <laughs> uh, I really thought, I really thought that they're gonna go later on for uh, Miku becoming the villain. Uh, maybe not like a uh, willing villain, uh, kind of controlled by the Domi Mommy. Uh, or maybe even a willing villain, uh, you know, frustrated at Hibiki, and Hibiki would have to fight with Miku, and then eventually, of course, they would go back. They would grow back together. Uh, either Miku would defeat Hibiki, but wouldn't be able to deal the final blow, or Hibiki would defeat Miku and wouldn't be able to deal the final blow, and then they would kiss and make up and make out. Right? And uh, the Domi Mommy would be like, Oh no, I, I thought you were the perfect weapon against Hibiki. How is it that you changed sides and now you're fighting me? We all know that trope, right? I really thought they're gonna go for that, but they positively surprised me at the end of the episode. And yeah, uh, we now have a better look into Hibiki's motivation. Her motivation is, essentially, I was saved, I cannot pay back to the person who saved me, so I'm gonna pay back to the world. I'm gonna pay it forward. I was saved, now I'm going to save others. In hopes that perhaps those who I save will also save more people. That last bit is kind of like my interpretation of it, but... Uh, from just what we were told, Hibiki wants to save others because she herself was saved, essentially. If only I could, use, I, could, I could use armed gear. And I'm telling you, Hibiki, it won't work until you scream its name. Just do a cool pose, scream Gangnir, and Gangnir will appear in your hands. That's, that's how it works. That's just, you know, 
anime uh, anime stuff. Have you never seen any anime, Hibiki? Honestly. Hmm, if you think about things while hungry, you'll only get bad ideas. And uh, I really thought, I really thought they're gonna push the drama between Hibiki and Miku even further here. That Hibiki and Tsubasa will go to the Okonomiyaki store and Miku is still there and, they're, and uh, Tsubasa and Hibiki are just talking and laughing and going through the door and there's Miku sitting there. And there's like an awkward moment, right? You're going into a restaurant with your side chick and your girlfriend, your wife, is sitting there. You know? <laughs> I really thought they're gonna deepen the drama even more. Uh, but now the Nehushtan girl is here. And uh, Hibiki, of course, has to fight her. Meets Miku on the way. And I really, really, really like it. I really, really, really do. Because it saves us useless drama. Uh, I mentioned it in multiple series, in multiple episodes. Uh, I hate the kind of forced drama. Uh, the best example of it is what we all know and hate. Right? Episode 3, uh, the main love interest sees our main protagonist with another girl at a shopping mall. And then in episode 11 or something, after 6 or 7 or 8 episodes of complete angst and misunderstandings and lack of communication, it's revealed that, oh, her, well, uh, oh, with a girl? Uh... Oh, no, that was my cross-dressing brother. You know? Or, oh, no, it was my sister. And something that would have been saved and prevented entirely if people just talked to each other. If people just behaved like human beings. If, if I ever get a girlfriend and I see her with some dude... I'm going to ask her, hey, uh, I saw her, I saw you with a dude in a store. Who was that? Or, you know what? I'm going to walk up to her. Hey, sup, what's going on? Uh, fancy running into you here. By the way, who's that? Oh, it's my brother. Oh, hey, I've never met you. Nice to meet you. You know, like human thing, human actions. Uh, this saves us the drama. Uh, also, uh, I wasn't talking about the, you know, who was that and uh, all that kind of deal in context of Sinful Gear, because Hibiki actually has a reason to not tell Miku about it. It's all super top secret. It's military secrets. Uh, she'd be, you know, put on the firing squad for revealing those secrets and whatnot. So she has the reason to keep it a secret. So the drama would actually make sense here. It, first time, this kind of prolonged drama caused by the lack of communication would make sense because the lack of, communi because the lack of communication would be actually, you know, explained. And it, and it would actually have a reason to exist, the lack of communication. But they decided that, you know what, no. We're not gonna keep that drama anymore. Here, right here, right now, Hibiki is gonna reveal her form to Miku. I love it. I genuinely love it. Uh, sure, it's gonna introduce us uh, an entire slew of new drama, right? Miku being worried about Hibiki potentially be being hurt and uh, dying, and perhaps she will want her to stop fighting, but Hibiki will tell her, no, I have to fight, and they're gonna fall apart, and there's gonna be some drama, you know? Something like that is definitely gonna happen. But it's not the same drama. We're not stretching the same drama across the whole season. We're solving a little bit of drama and we're introducing a new bit of drama. And that keeps things fresh. And I like it. I really do. 
Or maybe not. Maybe Simfugri is gonna surprise me positively again. And uh, Miku will be very understanding of what Hibiki is doing. And she will be supporting Hibiki, you know? Hibiki comes back from battle all scarred and wounded, and Miku is there waiting for her with bandages and disinfectant. You know? That would be nice. That would actually be nice. But what matters the most is that Miku now knows the truth, or at least a part of it. She now knows why Hibiki sometimes has to disappear. She now knows why Hibiki is sometimes late. She now knows why Hibiki has all those scars on her. She now knows why she's gotten more muscular. She's now in the know. The drama is no longer caused by Miku not knowing things. I just wonder, uh, is she gonna be told just the minimum of information and just, you know, left to her own devices? Or is she gonna be more, maybe not ingrained into the whole organization, but introduced to more of that, right? Listen up, Miku, there are those things called noise, and they're fighting, and I have the shard of Gangnir inside of me, and I'm one of, like, two people in Japan that can fight them, so I kinda have to. I want to protect you, Miku, with my life, if need be. And uh, the best way I can protect you is by being a Valkyrie and using the Simfu gear. Right? I hope it's the latter. Uh, near the beginning of uh, the season, I was wondering if perhaps Miku will also become a Valkyrie one day? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Hmm. Would be interesting if she did. But I don't know if she will. <laughs> and yeah, of course, Hibiki wants to talk to the Nehushtan girl, whose name is, I believe, Chris. Uh, Chris is like the closest looking character on the list of characters I have here. Yeah, she looks like Chris, so she's probably Chris. Uh, so I'm gonna keep calling her Chris. I mean, at least her hair color is the same, so... <laughs> uh, she's trying to talk to her, right? You're a human, why the fuck are you fighting with the noise? We're both humans, we can communicate. We don't have to fight. We can solve our differences by just talking. What do you want? What do you need? Maybe I can help you. I, I have to keep killing the noise, because... I can't convince the noise to stop talking, right? They're not really sentient. They're just monsters, so... Oh well, what can I do? But you, you I can talk to. I don't wanna kill you. I wanna talk to you. Let's go grab some crepes. Let's go grab some, you know, uh, some okonomiyaki with my wife. And let's talk about it. Let's talk our differences out. I like this approach. But when this approach doesn't work, when this approach doesn't work, Hibiki just decides to punch the bitch. <laughs> just grabs her by the uh, uh, by the Nehushtan whips and just punches her in her solar plex or whatever it's called. I like it. I like it, because, you know, uh, usually the trope in this situation is that the main character lets herself be bitten to, to a pulp and doesn't fight back, and even, like, dehensions and becomes a regular human, and then the enemy human just wails on her and beats her up to a pulp, and then tears start streaming from her eyes, and, like, and she's like, no! Why don't you fight me? I was told that you're an enemy. Fight me or I'm gonna kill you. I, I don't want to kill, you know? And she becomes a good person. Here, no. Fuck that shit. <laughs> he just punches her. With a smile sing on with us as she punches her in the gut. <laughs> uh, 
And the neck with an armor cracks. With just a punch. Hibiki doesn't need her armed gear. She just punches her. And that's enough to crack the armor. And cause a fucking shockwave. I really, 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 really want Hibiki to remain a brawler for as long as possible. Let her use a Gangnir, sure, but only as her ultimate weapon. You know, nothing else is working, she's facing, she's facing against 500 noise and uh, someone, some noise sympathizer with uh, simple gear of their own. She has no choice, she has to use Gangnir and she's an absolute savage beast with it. But outside of it, I really want her to remain a brawler. Even her design, right? Those thick bracers on her, uh, on her hands with the whole piston work that adds power to the punch. Even that screams brawler. I want her to be a brawler. Oh, man. It's been over an hour and we're not even at the closing thoughts section. <laughs> Such a great episode! What else can I say? It's such a great episode. It, it completely escapes the tropes that I thought it would fall into. It really surprised me positively with how the issue of uh, Miku and Hibiki's relationship was solved. It really surprised me with uh, how the issue of Chris was solved. Positively. Yeah. Uh, if I didn't... If I, like... If I didn't like this series by now, I'm liking it now. But, but I liked it even now, and I'm, I, now I'm liking it even more. <laughs> Damn, it's so great. Question is, what's gonna happen now? Uh, yeah... What's gonna happen in episode seven? How will uh, how will uh, you know Miku be integrated, quote unquote, into the whole uh, whole situation with the noise and with Hibiki being a uh, Valkyrie? That's one of the questions I have, and I can't wait to see an answer to it. Uh, also, Chris, I'm assuming. Hibiki punched her unconscious, and they're gonna take her into custody. Or at least I'm hoping that's what's gonna happen. Maybe Chris will escape. I don't know. That's also possible, I guess. Although after receiving that punch, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, would be cool if they actually captured her. Because that would also uh, make... The whole situation with Ryoko and my suspicions kind of interesting, right? Is Ryoko the dummy mommy or is she not? That uh, Chris being captured would answer that question. Because maybe Chris would give her out. Or maybe Ryoko would uh, help her escape. Hmm. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for future episodes. Holy shit. I have... Uh, I've seen, like, a lot of anime. A lot, a lot. And uh, even including, like, the last season of anime and this season. I don't think there's been an anime where I would be looking forward to future episodes quite as much as I'm looking forward to them in Simple Gear. And don't get me wrong, uh, every time an episode of Princess Principle would end, I would be looking forward to it, uh, to the next one. Now, that was a little diminished by the fact that uh, uh, the storytelling of Princess Principle is anachronic, anachronous, whatever you want to call it. The episodes are essentially out of order, uh, except the last three episodes, they're actually in order. So that kind of diminished that. Uh, I've always been looking forward to new episodes of, you know, Tact of Destiny, although that got diminished with time as we didn't get answers to the questions that they kept asking. 
Symphogear Gear is, I think, the anime that I'm looking forward to future episodes the most. And uh, each time I have to consciously stop myself from binging it. <laughs> you guys have to wait a week for a new episode, so it's only fair that I have to sta I have to wait a week. But man, it would have it would have been it it had to have been agonizing watching it as it was releasing one episode at a time, one episode a week. Especially, I'm assuming later in the series, as the cliffhangers are getting better and uh, better and better, worse and worse. This episode ended without much of a cliffhanger, so I don't have uh, much of an issue waiting for episode 7, but I still do want to see it. Such a great series. I'm, like, super grateful to... Uh, who was it that recommended me Symphogear initially? Who was it? Uh, let me check out my Discord... Uh... <laughs> I think it was Anish. N yeah, who was it? I think it was Anish TSP. I think, if if I'm mistaken, do correct me. Uh, I don't want to spend you know particularly much time browsing through my... Yeah, it was Anish. Yep, yep. I see the message. If you're a connoisseur of Yuri, I recommend Symphogear, D-Track fansub specifically. Yes, it was Anish. Thank you, Anish, for recommending me Symphogear. I had it in my watch later list on Mal, but I have a lot of shows on my watch later list on Mal, and I'm not really watching any of them. Yeah, I, I'm really glad that I started watching this series. I really, truly am. Not only is it a great series to watch, but it also did wonders for the growth of my channel, honestly, from like a purely pragmatic perspective. It really did wonders. I got like 50 subs ever since I started watching it. What? <laughs> yeah, I think that's gonna be it from me. I think we're gonna end it here. I don't have anything more to say except how much I love this episode and how much I love this series as a whole. So, uh, yeah. We're just gonna end it here. Uh, leave a comment down below what you thought of this episode, what you thought of my reaction, what you thought of my, of my theories. Just don't spoil me anything. Please, I beg of you. If you have even a uh, slightest, uh, you know, doubt that what you wanna write might be a spoiler, please don't. Please don't. I'd rather keep my theories, and I'd rather keep theorizing. And uh, from what I heard, you guys also like me theorizing. So, if you keep me spoiler-free, then you get better content as well, because I get to create new theories. Maybe right, maybe wrong, who knows? But it's fun. It's fun to create theories. I have a cork board, I might, you know, draw some red string on it. <laughs> uh, that'd be fun. Uh, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked, but tell me why so I can improve. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my future releases. It's not only Symphogear, but also those frontline, Adifureta Season 2, Sabikui, Bisco, and Tokyo 24. Cool. If you like any of the shows, watch them. And uh, yeah, and I also have other shows in my portfolio, so you might want to watch them as well. Uh, if you're a connoisseur of Yuri as well, you might want to watch uh, Princess Principle. I have a whole playlist on my channel. Uh, might want to check it out. Join my Discord server. Link is down in the description. It's open to everybody. And there is a Symphogear channel there where you can discuss everything with spoilers as long as you actually spoil the message. You know, put it in the spoiler tags. Then uh, you can discuss it with fellow gearheads. It's fun to discuss things like that, and I'm not looking at the spoilers, so, you know, you can uh, you can talk shit about me, and I won't see that. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, if you really like what I'm doing, and if you want to maybe watch Simple Gear one week early, you can uh, support me on Patreon. 
for just a dollar a month you get access to a role on my discord server and that gives you access to a patreon only channel and for 10 bucks you get early access to non-seasonal shows and this season it's simple gear as you're watching this episode episode 7 on youtube episode 8 will already be on patreon if not, then I probably overslept and you will have to wait a couple of hours until it's up on Patreon. But usually I upload uh, both on the same day. So uh, at least that I can almost guarantee. <laughs> almost, because sometimes I'm late. I have completely fucked up sleeping schedule, so... It is what it is. Anything else I need to mention? Uh, support... Support. Uh, share this video. Uh, share this playlist if you know someone who'd want to watch another brand new reaction to Simple Gear. Recommend mine. Why not? Uh, Simple Gear is, uh, from what I heard, already ended. So if you want to rewatch it, and uh, if you know some friends who want to rewatch it, why not rewatch it with my reaction series? Hmm? Maybe, you know, just, just a proposition. I'm going to be watching everything, by the way. Uh, every single season, every single OVA. Everything that there is to watch about Simple Gear, I'm gonna watch. I can assure you of that. And I don't think I'm gonna take any breaks either. I'm just gonna continue watching it week after week. And yeah, I think I think it's truly it right now. I shield what I need to shield. Uh, I don't have any, uh, any merch. I don't have any uh, address to send me gifts. <laughs> anything like that, so I don't need to shield anything. Uh, I don't have any sponsors. So we're just gonna end it here. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be it from me for today. So as always, do all the good stuff. And uh, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers. And here's another benefit you get for being my Patreon supporter. No matter the tier you support me at, you will be on this credits list. <laughs>